what is up what is up it's welcome back to the channel so today we are doing a nella review and a build guide i'll start with the review and then later the build guide now i'm trying something new with this video i'm going to be talking fast i'm not going to be repeating any points i'm just going to mention something and move on people have been saying my videos are too long so i'm taking that feedback and i'm trying to make this one under 15 minutes so let's hope um it gets to the point where it can be that short all right so some frequently asked questions about nella the first one i get is is nella a must summon i think yes because she is just she's not that she's unique there's her and mayne there aren't a lot of revivers in the game there's only those two if you don't have mayne you need nella especially if you're gonna be playing any sort of arena so she is a must summon for you and she's a must summon for everyone else because she's a dark healer we don't know when she'll return and uh, what are the chances that we get another dark healer almost none so she is a must summon is nella broken i think yes she just the introduction have made arena change you can't cleave anymore cleave was making a resurgence with cleave and regular dahlia now this is not possible because of the revive into immunity this completely cucks any dahlia cleave teams and it has made tank teams be packed in prominence should you use your ether to summon nella now she is a must summon but i do not think you should get to a point where you're using your ether remember the golden rule ether you only spend it to summon on limited units and your premium units get your monad it's it's, it's better to get your monad ava to five star or six star than to use that ether to get nella rather miss out on Lenla, arena rewards are not that they are important you got out of ether but you not use your ether to get Nella. now tier list placing people i take long to um change my tier lists i change them every three months right and october's coming so i'm gonna make a change to my tier lists people will ask me where do i put Nella? this sign here is for pvp in pvp definitely s plus as i said she is whopping the meta around herself just anyone who has her is putting her in she is making tank teams survive a lot better because of her passive we'll discuss it later in this is player versus ai which is pve in pve i would put her a tier below um mainly because she's just a standard healer i guess i think she can be anywhere like if us they can be above here she can also be up here right but um anywhere between these two tiers it's fine uh, i don't think she's like that needed i don't think that she um changes anything shakes up anything as i said it's just an immunity buffer and a good healer at that so if i'm putting um someone like Aste in s maybe she is s plus that's why she's probably is a bus summon in my opinion so those are the frequently asked questions let's move on to the next section all right so her skills explained basically it's simple the way she's supposed to move she's supposed to start with a passive then use her third skill then spend the rest of the game using her first skill why is this a thing right the the passive is that the enemy attacks you with a hit whenever she's hit she'll trigger an agile response that gives her 70 percent priority this makes her cut a lot of units whether they're cleaving or not and this agile response happens before extra trigger effects happen something like um the the most popular team would be the cleave team that has the vlada and uh notia whenever the vlada notia happens the vlada will attack before notia attacks she would have already healed so she can save your team from being killed by notia's passive and even if they get killed she then gets a turn before the notia moves because she gains 70 percent priority she'll resurrect everyone heal them and if they were alive she'll push their priority by 20 percent which is pretty good and also um give them immunity to stop dahlia from like freezing them or anything like that so they are in good hands and um while she's waiting for her cooldowns to come back she'll be using her first skill which if she's less than 85 percent she'll heal herself by 15 percent if she has more than 85 percent hp she'll heal the ally with the lowest hp with 15 percent and this is 15 percent of her hp so the more hp she has the more healing she gives to the allies and herself of course so th those are her skills she's a simple humble um <laughs> healer 
I forgot to mention the best effect. She has a best effect on her first skill, which means her best effect is um, not capped behind the cooldown. She can do it whenever. And the effects are pretty good. The only problem is that they cost more. I think this one's 80, then 120, then 160. Uh, and I'm talking about action points here. The 161 level 3 is very good. She will give everyone immunity for two turns, which means she can theoretically have your team in immunity the whole time, right? Even if the game lasts 10, 10 plus turns. The other one, it gives action points to everyone. 50, that's pretty good. Increases healing as well. And then um, the healing will then apply to everyone when you just have 80 action points. Very good. That's the, those are skills again as i said simple healer that you can use in any game mode pros and cons as you can see the list of pros is long so i'm just gonna start with the pros with the cons um some of your cons is that she does not have any cleanse so you would like your healers to have a cleanse someone like monareva someone like Tio, someone like dna these units have cleanse or buff removal it's not called cleanse in this game but you know in most rpg we call it cleansing which is removing debuffs from allies she instead has immunity instead of cleansing the other thing is that um the difference between her and mayne is that mayne buffs the speed of the team through her transcendence we call these imprints because they need duplicate units right to transcend someone to t6 you're gonna need to summon multiple duplicates or farm them in the double ganger and um <clears throat> this is what's happening here she instead has an HP imprint instead of a speed imprint. So um, Mayne has a leg up there, which means Mayne still works for Cleaves teams while she only works for tank teams, specifically for PvP. Now what's good about her, her healing is very good. She heals with every skill. First skill heals, the passive heals, the third skill heals. That's a healer that you want. The healer that can heal with all of her skills is a very useful healer. She has high base HP. And all of her HP is based off of her HP, which means it's one of the easiest units to get to 20k HP. She has as much HP at base as Demi Drakan. And Demi Drakan was the highest. No one came close. Now she is there with Demi Drakan with that huge base HP. And she is easier to build to 20k HP than other units are. And then she has priority push for the whole team. Um, not a lot of units have this. Um, DNA has a 5% priority push for the whole team with her exclusive equipment. She has a 20% on her third skill. That is pretty good. That's great. Normally, units have a priority pushback for the enemy that requires effectiveness. Um, think about units like Valentine with the third skill. She instead has that... Um, she pushes the team which doesn't require any effectiveness it just needs to happen right and then she can also push herself forward making herself gain a bigger turn a turn closer this is the 70 percent here that we see with her passive she can push herself to get um, a turn very quickly agile response again she acts on the opponent's team these are the type of units that you want in arena defense whereby you don't care about having the first turn because you know they will do something even when it is the opponent's team right and the agile response will uh trigger the self push and the healing she also revives as i said only mayne mayne was the only reviver in the game now she joins the revivers um there's two other units that put a buff called revive on death uh that revives that unit one of them is monad ava with her first skill the other one is Sayren. But this one is not a buff. It's a revive from there. They died, right? She didn't have to move to revive them. Even if she didn't have a turn, she will get her turn and then revive them. So that's pretty good. Uh, immunity buff. Of course, one of the few units with an immunity buff. Um, I think there's a total of three now with her, right? We have DNA with immunity buff. We have Aste with immunity buff. And then now we have Nella with immunity buff everyone else has a way to remove the buffs from themselves or the team someone like Tio, but they do not then put immunity buff afterwards i think Tio has a burst to put an immunity buff but that's a burst that doesn't come in a team and then her best skills are great as i already mentioned there 
she can perpetually have immunity she can heal all allies with just the first skill those are great buffs to have okay so those are the pros and cons a long list of pros now let's move on to the armor all right so this is the build guide portion of the video and we are talking about her armor now my favorite one is to make her tanky give her around 160 speed and give her immunity so the base is that she must have immunity especially if you're going to be running her in any sort of arena setting right give her immunity make sure that she's protected and she is able to revive people you know she doesn't get frozen or stunned or anything like that right <clears throat> and then you can pair the immunity with any of these three two pieces so immunity is only a two piece so you're gonna complement it i like the complement of the counter set because the healing on her first skill is pretty good but if you are seeing yourself like any stats because a counter chance is not a stat it's um it's something that's it's an effect right you can run the hp set which gives her 30 percent more hp you can make her a lot more tankier maybe even get her to like 25k hp when you pair the immunity set with the life set that 30 percent there is a big chunk if you're thinking of something that increases speed here the swiftness set is pretty good this is what we used to run mainer on mainers normally had immunity and swiftness basically the more they lose hp the faster they become which means they can get um to the front very easily and then revive if you are going to run her only exclusively in pve for whatever reason <laughs> right you might think of running her on the speed set make her slightly faster than all of your dps's if like your fastest dps is something like 240 maybe she's 250 speed right if it's something like 190 maybe she's 200 speed just make her slightly faster than your um your damage dealers she moves first she maybe she puts immunity and then she can cycle faster and put more immunity using her first skill the speed set is kind of meh in my case because um even if she's like slow she still kind of works in pve as well but then if she's speedy she won't work in pvp so um just take it with the salt as it comes that's the armor i would put on her to rephrase immunity needed base and then you can pair it with either counter set swiftness or health or just peter or just put a four piece speed set as we always say the speed set works on everything okay now coming to her weapons and accessories uh she has three weapons that she can run and two of them are based off the best skill the first one is that when she uses a best skill she'll heal an extra 20 percent for the lowest hp enemy so she already heals for um and she if she's besting so it's already best one so she'll heal everyone for 15 percent and the lowest health enemy will be healed for um 15 plus 20 which is 35 percent pretty good uh it will heal basically max heal right and then this one is my favorite one i think this is number one this is the best in slot emblem of dominance emblem of dominance has a hundred percent chance to increase defense of all allies by 50 percent for one turn when using a burst so that burst will not only heal give ap and also give immunity it will also give defense up increase the defense by 50 percent that is a lot emblem of dominance definitely number one number two i would give it to royal stinger number three which is good for all healers is immortal pride basically it increases healing received by allies by 10 percent now it's not a it's not additive it's multiplicative so after for example 10 percent would be 10 percent of the 15 percent so it would be like a 0.1 percent increase right <laughs> which is the 0.15 which is like a 0.2 no ah 1.5 increase which is like a two increase so it'll go from 15 to 17 healing but um yeah it's not much but most healers benefit from having it it increases all healing effects skill one skill two skill three well as these two only work when she's using her first skill the only accessory i would give attention to is the resurrection token all of your units that can resurrect need the resurrection token basically she will have a hundred percent chance to resurrect and heal by 15 percent of max health when killed uh this goes to 30 percent basically uh most people will target your resurrection unit right 
and you want to make sure that if she, if they find a way to kill her she has a way to resurrect herself and then after she resurrects she can then resurrect everyone again right so the only and you have to go speed set you have to go speed main step the only this is literally the only accessory i will give attention to the other ones not worth it resurrection token best in slot only one you should be putting otherwise you can even just put a blue one it's fine if you are not that if you are not in that part of the game yet where you are running uh legendary accessories but the only accessories i'll give any attention is the resurrection token finally i will skip through the talismans uh you can run any sort of talisman it's fine um pve wise team building we're talking team building now pve wise the method called dog team it exists healer double debuffer damage dealer of course you can always change one of these debuffers um maybe she sucks you can put in aste here demi aste you can put in uh nurses dahlia there's a lot of dark damage dealers you can put maxwell hey whoever it's a fun dark team but yeah there's one that that is chain point positive which means all of the special effects happen and um she's not too bad right she has defense break which can help everyone else deal a lot more damage but um yeah pve wise you can have your meme dog team so you can get into any team where immunity is required she can get in right basically wherever you would put aste you can put her and she works wherever um dn has is a bit better than her but that's just that and then pvp wise we see everyone put her in all sorts of tank teams right you can put them in teams with christina you can put her in teams with demi Khan. you can put her in teams with Norses dahlia right with more revives you know you have these units that stick around cannon sticks around even if she dies you can revive her and go through it again i've seen people run both her nella mayne and us and monad ava of course all of these teams have monad ava monad ava is the best unit in the game guys so she is in every one of these teams <laughs> right but you can already see her there if you're running any sort of tank team she is a go-to she has replaced mayne completely and in other cases this team here right this team would be running cannon here normally but now it has her because she has that much value makes your um your nurses dahlia just survive a lot better and um everything is just harder to kill right everything is just harder to kill and that's what i love about this it's really just a fantastic team and i um <clears throat> i think we should all applaud the fact that this one unit was able to shake up the arena meta she is definitely very good in pvp and usable in pve and um yeah that is nella i like everything about her guys as i said she's waifu for me and i say she's a mass summon and i'm saying she is broken and she's a dark healer we finally got it guys nella build guide review thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video